Hi everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. We hope you've had a great week. The first week of March has been pretty uneventful, which is a big plus in our book. Yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> news is good news. Yeah, we're hoping to have a, a few more of those that we can string together. That'd be swell. Terry's wrapping up serial number three. And we are adding additional numbers to our printing order to make sure everyone that wants a copy can get a copy. We've had trouble with one and two selling out too quickly. Yeah. We print pretty close to the chest because we don't um, have a place to store them. And um, after, you know, several months, they're kind of... Off the radar. Yeah. And then there you are. And then there we are. So we print pretty close to the chest. So if you... Um, if you know you're going to want to read this, the individual issues, be sure to order from your comic book shop or um, let us know and we'll make sure our numbers um, reflect that and that everybody can get a copy yeah. that wants one. We're yeah. so excited that you guys yeah. are a, a loving cereal and we really do appreciate the support. So, yeah. um, Terry, get busy. Okay. okay. I'm working on it. Got it right here. Some more. You I'm gotta have more, more than one page. <laughs> I have two pages. I have a page. That's and not enough. <laughs> okay, I'll make some more. <laughs> and thank everyone that gave us feedback regarding us Kickstarter. We are definitely yes. keeping up. Uh, we'll definitely keep you updated about what uh, you would like to do for a Kickstarter. We'll kind of lock that in in the next couple of months and go from there. Yeah, a lot of great answers in last week's video in the comments and all that. Thank you. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Just a reminder about Terry Moore Live on April 9th and 10th. Mm -hmm. That's coming up. Be sure to join us during that weekend. We're going to have a lot of fun. Terry's going to be doing a lot of live um, streaming events mm -hmm. on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Yeah, I, okay. I think we can do the, the trilogy there. And then on Sunday, we'll do this, Studio Sunday Live. And you'll be on camera. What? Well. Whoa. Yeah. Well. <laughs> we're, th we're thinking about it. <laughs> Breaks on. No, okay. I'll, I'll probably be live. Okay. Nobody's going to force you. It's just, you know, 20 million eager no, fans I, like, yeah, to see right. what happens. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll be live. There's no pressure. I'll be live one way or the other, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, you'll be live on Sunday one way or the other. <laughs> Right. Whether we see that or not, I, I don't know. I was trying to give you guys proof that Robin is an AI. Um, I will be on camera. How's that? Okay. Okay. So in one word, you could just stick a finger in there. Just some. Yeah. I can do that now. Yeah. Okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's gonna be great. See why you don't want me to go live? <laughs> <laughs> She's uncontrollable. Okay. So uh, also in the live weekend, we got uh, sketches. So sketches, sketches, new um, ever art, and new serial art. Yes. Just so uh, you back. guys know, in case you don't already know, that we keep the first and last issues of all of Terry's series kind of for our archives. Mm -hmm. So those pages will never be available. So if you're looking for original art, it'll always be issue two, through nine or whatever the, however long the series is. But typically, lately it's been 10 issues. So two through nine would be available, not one and 10. That's insider information. We keep those um, for our archives. Yeah. But we'll have some new serial and some ever art up. Okay. So, and I think, what did we decide? We keep the first um, oh, whenever. five or 10 pages in the last five or ten, I'll have to take a look and see what on we ever because it's one long graphic. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. There's and there are some really wicked pages in ever. So, okay, well, we'll see what we can find to put up. Um, uh, so that's it for me. Every time I say wicked like that, I think of that little kid on the trike and uh, the Incredibles or you know, the family superheroes. Wicked, okay. <laughs> Okay. okay. Do you have anything other than that to add? Uh, yes, I do actually I have a short video for you. Recently we were at the family house and it's you've seen it in the comics, so take a look. Hey, so I'm out in front of Lilith's house, um, which in Strangers in Paradise was also Francine's mother's house, Marie. Um, but in Rachel Rising, this was 
the country house that Lilith walked up to and took over from the old farmer. Um, I can, there are crows in the, I don't know if you can hear that. There are crows in the yard, just like for Lilith. Uh, the crows follow her everywhere, like her, um, I don't know, her servants, her watchers. They're her eyes out there. So there's the field where Lilith walk across with uh, Rachel and they talked and uh, um, somewhere over in there by the fence line is where she left the farmer to stand until he passed out and died. <laughs> it was a lot going on in this house. So I just, I'm visiting it for the weekend and uh, I just thought I'd share that with you. So there you go. Lilith's house. Okay, well, you ready to get on the hot seat? I am. Okay, this first question is from Colin Gray, and it is a technical question, so bear with me as I read it. Okay. Listen carefully. All right. When working on 11 by 17 board, and assuming at print it will be the standard 6 and 5 eighths by 10 and a quarter, American size comic, what do you rule your safe slash live area to? That is, how close can you get your panel borders, balloons, slash balloons, to the trim line boundaries without endangering text or vital story art? And by extension, do you rule your boards to a true exact 10 by 15 trim area, or is it more like 10 by 15 and 3 eighths or other? That's very technical, That's very specific. very technical. And uh, what Colin is asking is exactly what I wondered for the first three years and search for because uh, being an indie cartoonist, I was kind of up to, it was up to me to figure out what page, well, you can work on whatever page size you want. And you did. And I did. I tried <laughs> many sizes, but I also tried different ratios, like width to height. Uh, and that matters in terms of like, the comic book is only gonna be the same size. Comic book is a comic book. Um, where's my comic? I have an example of a comic book right here. What else do you have in there, Mr. Moore? Nothing that we need to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind that man behind the curtain. Uh, <laughs> darn, she found another hydras. I gotta hide those again now. Um, you know, the comic is always the same size. So Colin is talking about this ratio of how high it is to how wide it is. And then, so when we go to make the original art, we don't draw it this size. Although there is a guy in South America who draws the same size and it's incredible uses the little pins. Um, but most most everybody tends to draw bigger. So how do you go from here to here? How do you know where the edge of the page is? How far in is that gutter to where the letters are going to be safe? And the printers give you some instructions when you contact your first printer. They'll say, here's some general rules. Or you can go get the ProArt uh, pre-lined pages and measure those off and see what their ratios are. Um, what tends to be a quarter inch here turns into an eighth of an inch here. So you have to do all this uh, calculating. Uh, so the fastest way to, see, to figure this out is to see it. And I have a page template that I use every time I make a page. I light box a blank piece of paper over my template and I mark off where all those corners are, and um, what I'll do is when we cut to the, the tutorial part, I'll show it to you on the screen and you can see my measurements. All so, I hear is wah, 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 wah. It's like first day algebra class, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's better to see it and to get somebody's template. And in my How to Draw book, I published my template. And you can take that and type it into Photoshop, make your own page, print it out. Well, okay. that, Colin, would be the answer for you. And that How to Draw book should be out at the end of the month. So, yeah. and you have an actual, yeah. you actually have the numbers in there. Yeah, I have, the, I have it in a two-page splash page horizontal. And you can see the numbers and see the ratios and then copy those down onto a blank piece of paper, rule it off, and you have it. You know, so. How you do it. How I do it. You can always go to the art store or uh, the comic supply place and get the pro line blue page that's already made, looks like a DC page, and um, start from there. And then if you want to draw a little smaller, you just pull it down ratio-wise, bigger ratio-wise. 
people that worked larger were like in the old school days, they were much larger. I think people like Paul Pope and um, maybe Neil Adams still work kind of large. Uh, some people work smaller. Um, just depends on your art and what tools you want to use. If you want to use a fat pen but get it look like a fine line on the paper, um, then you know you draw larger. And that's why all the Charles Schultz Peanuts pages are big. He used a fat pen. You know, so stuff like that. Okay. It's very right. yeah, that's all that's very a whole detailed. day in art class there. Yes, it is. Okay, Colin, I hope that answered your question. But I'll show it to you in the art tutorial. Okay. The second question is much easier. Okay, good. It's from David, and he says, after all these many, many, many pages of drawn, inked, and lettered pages, does Terry's hand hurt? Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. Look, it's just hanging there. <laughs> yes. Uh, there's something about, it's, it's, it's something about being in a claw and just keeping it in a claw all day for hours and then just makes it do things. That it, Is that why you dry those claw hands? Because you think of them as a claw? No, the claw hands uh, Oh, come, they're my, oh, they're my nemesis. The lobster claw hands. Uh, I first saw those in National Lampoon. There was a cartoonist that did them and, uh, on purpose. And the face would be here. Somebody's face would be there. It was really wicked looking. Um, but once, once in a while, I'll, I'll just draw all the fingers together and the thumbs out. And Robin says, that's a claw. Don't draw the claw hand. <laughs> I think it looks more like a duck. <laughs> oh, it's awful. <laughs> okay, um, so what do you do to, to uh, help with that? Um, pause um, periodically and stretch out. Um, one of the things I've noticed that really helps me a lot is I tend to play guitar, which uses your hands in a different way. And that... Uh, that variety of motion during the day, every day, uh, really helps your hands be more well-rounded, used, not just always doing the same thing. Repetitive motion is the problem, and that, of course, is drawing. So find something else to do with your hands, whether it's gardening or um, something else, but something else each day you can do to help round out the movement in your hands and get them strong, and otherwise they will atrophy right into that claw. Oh, no, not the claw. You'll end up like Renoir, who was uh, having to take uh, bandage brushes to his hand to paint when he was in his 90s, 80s and 90s, because he had arthritis and just... That's why the later Renoirs are looser. He had, well, he had bad eyes and he was drawing with his arm. He was painting with his arm. Okay, well, yeah. hopefully I'm not going to have to hold your page up and you're going to have to... It could get, Draw straight armed. If it gets stuck, with a pencil it, taped to your hand. If we have to, doctor says we need, you can get one position left. Make it this one. Okay. <laughs> we'll put a pencil in there. <laughs> okay. Well, that's it for me. What are you drawing today? I'll show you my page template and um, share that with you. Okay. Meet you All back right. here. All right. You guys have a good week. Meet me back here. Okay. So this is a. Uh, test printing of the How to Draw book that's coming out, the expanded edition. It's, it doesn't have this dark cover. This is just a, a printing that we tried. Um, but uh, in the back of the book, the last chapter is my how-to tools, tips, and templates. And I'm not kidding when I say templates. I talk about the tools first. And then here we get to the template part. And it really directly addresses the question that Colin brought up and that I had for the first few years. Um, what size do I draw at? You know, if I can't get my hands on Marvel DC paper or I want to draw at a different ratio, how do I draw and know what my title shapes are and things like that? And I talk about it and I show that I tried. These are all my pages from my Strangers in Paradise. Look at the sizes and the differences and the border differences and things like that. Um, it's easier to look at one photo than to dig through the archives. But I go into detail about how I figured it out and how I make the page that I have. And then when you get to the next thing here, it is a uh, spread that, whoops, sorry, I bumped it with my arm. It's a spread that shows you exactly how it works, you know, from the um, page to the printer bleed. The printer's going to need that much extra so that when they do the machine cutting, they can um, uh, 
they don't hurt your arch. So you allow that much safety. Don't put anything important out there. And then from uh, the page edge to the safe area where anything you write inside the safe area is going to be okay. So this is where you start lettering is inside the safe area. You don't letter out here in the gutter where it, the lettering of all things might be cut off. That's unforgivable. We could forgive if your elbow in the drawing is cut off on a full bleed page. But if the lettering is out here and changing what everybody's saying, that's different. So using the measurements that are in there, you can make this page. And this is my, I just took a page of uh, two-ply Strathmore and I put it on the drawing board with a T-square, lined up the top, and then started measuring down from there horizontally. And if you line up the top of the page with a T-square, every horizontal line is going to be square. Every vertical line to the horizontal will be square. And that will be important when you get into the computer world with your page. Uh, where the computer world is unforgiving. You don't want to be messing with adjusting uh, that. It's a hassle, uh, especially if you have 20 pages or 120 pages for a graphic novel. You want to put scan in the page and it's there. Um, and then on the, you can see where I've marked off the, the printer bleed, the edge of the paper to the title safe. And then I make my own personal notes here. Um, I will give you... Uh, I'll put the camera on top of this in a cutaway and let you see exactly what these measurements are. This is pretty close to what you might see on like a pro arts uh, pre-made page or if you've got uh, page, pages to draw on from DC or Marvel, they'll send you paper and it'll have this in blue line. Um, I don't have it in blue line because this is my template. What I do, I turn this on, turn the light box on, and then... I use this paper, as I've said before. It's the 400 series uh, Bristol vellum. I use uh, vellum for um, brush, primarily brush art, and then I use smooth for primarily the pen art. Um, that's I think that's how they meant it to be used. So you pull a page out and put it on top. And once again, okay, I got to get in the picture here. It's not not a pretty sight, but I got to make sure that the top edges are aligned. So I make sure that the, the top lines up. That's all that really matters at this point. And then I just mark off all my little target points. There's vertical center, title save, page edge. And then I mark the outside of the page on here because I'm going to cut that off. And that's how I'm going to end up with a 10 by 15. I mean, uh, 11 by 17. The horizontal center, the center. I used to have fee centers, which were right in here. And you'll notice that I tend to work on a three-tier platform. The um, This line that, uh, that donate, denotes the first tier to second tier is usually at a fee mark, so that if you put something in here, I've showed you that before. Um, it's a good place to put something, catch your eye. Which is a, another good thing to remember if you're uh, a criminal on the loose. Uh, don't hide inside landscape where you're at the fee point of the landscape. They'll look there first with binoculars. So you have to reverse engineer your knowledge like that. Okay, see how I everything's marked off? I'm done with the light board. I'm done with the template. And now what I have is this. And... Let's move it to the drawing table and put the, put the blue lines on it. Okay, so this is a close-up of the template. And you can take a screen grab of this and copy all these numbers down. Um, this is pretty standard stuff here, guys. I think you'll find this really close to the other um, pre-made pages and things like that. I have one other mark here in the middle, <clears throat> where middle where the center point is. And then down at the bottom, of course, it's all the same. Every single time I roll these off by hand, it's always a little off down here. And I have to go in and correct it. I put it on the computer and check everything on the computer with, you know, you pull the guidelines down. And the guidelines would always reveal this flaw in my uh, plastic rulers. And it's coming from, this is plastic, and, and the T-square 
the triangle. The triangle is plastic. And I guess they're supposed to be square, but they are not computer square, um, which is one of the reasons why I switched to a metal uh, T-square because I kept seeing, whoa, I'm getting all tangled up here with my little beep bop. Um, I switched to this so that I could, in all hopes of getting a, a 45 degree angle, a real one, not close, you know, like a plastic T-square. So I do my best. Um, the, the, I, start, I began to realize that the trick was get this as horizontal as, I use this and then line it up with the very top of the page. And at least I have that, oops, here you go. Line that up with the top of the page and at least I have that as a uh, baseline. And then when I go down and make the next line and the next line and then all the way down, um, at least I know that my horizontals all match, right? And then I, I make the verticals do the, as close as I can. But I don't know, there you go. The error in humans or plastic or something is always down there in the corner on my template. Maybe you guys uh, can help me with that. Okay, so this template produces this page. I thought you might want to see it. This is a page from uh, serial number two, so you should have already seen this by now. Uh, so this is not a, it's supposed to not be any spoilers. But here's how it works. This page is sitting on top of this template, right? That much of the page, right there, is the printer bleed. That much of the page is going to get cut off, I know, when it gets to the printer. From here, here to here, is the actual page of the comic. There to there is the actual page of the comic. Um, If we go in, I wish I had a copy of number two. I should show you the real page. Let's go to number two. Let's look at the real page. There it is. Okay. That converts to that. That's how it gets cropped. This page is something like 6.125 by 10.188. And then when you add plus bleed, it ends up being uh, 6.875 by 10.438, I think, is what that is. So the actual book that we're looking at ends up being 6.125 by 10.188, I think. And then, but I drew it at, to have be allowed for the extra printer crop that's up here. Make sense? And when it comes to the lettering, um, you can see the, how far the lettering reduction goes down. There's the word probably in real life, and there it is in print. You can see the reduction there. I think this reduction ends up being something like 60 something percent, 67 percent size. So what I ended up doing was I noticed that all the old cartoonists were typically uh, lettering at, um, I think it's three eighths and then one eighth, three eighths, one eighth, three eighths, one eighth, three eighths on the, you know, three eighths height or two eighth height, one eighth gap, two eighth to three eighth height, one gap. So I got the lettering tool and I looked at it and found that if I put it right there past just a little pat in three and a quarter, just a little past three, that it produced that kind of gap. That's a two eighth gap with a one eighth um, gutter, two eighth gap, one eighth gutter, two eighth gap, one eighth gutter. If I put this little dial at three and then I use the bottom row. And the bottom row is what you will see when I do that. That's what you'll see here in the blue line, that that came from this. Doop, 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 doop. And when I, I draw it, I letter it like that and it ends up being that size. Now you can play with it. You can make your lettering bigger or smaller with this, of course, and it 
depends on how how you want to letter which how big you want your lettering on the page I ended up going with this size lettering because I have a lot of pages where there needs to be uh, a lot of dialogue you know things like this a lot of conversation and it's just cleaner and easier if I can get this down to like this probably reads as a as an 11 point or a 10 point uh, in a book you know uh, 12 points too big in a book uh, depending on what font it is but say this is like a Comic Sans looking font um, um, something like that so it ended up being I, I, I wanted my book to have like a 10 or 11 font as opposed to a 12 font some books have bigger lettering like kids books or fast reading books things like that or maybe just for style you know so there you go you get there's a good example right there of reduction it goes from that to that. So the basic rule of thumb is a quarter inch here is uh, can be an eighth of an inch here. Is that right? Yeah, it's that much reduction. A little over an eighth of an inch. Um, there's a lot of um, calculators out there that you can use um, to see what uh, reduction sizes would be. You know how I ended up doing this was I ended up um, measuring the lettering in Marvel Comics um, and DC Comics and then getting a conversion to see what that would look like on 11 by 17. I did a lot of like, you know, math conversion, uh, just double checking it. But the basic rule of thumb is that it's, it's pretty universal. Once you get it once, you got it. Um, one other thing to show you, um, you can use the same guide, of course, for your cover art. Um, it's the same thing. I just marked off the the uh, the crop corner and then the uh, the safe corner. And this smaller box inside is the title safe. And then when it was time to draw, I had my figure. Um, I knew that the comic would... I don't want to draw in real cover art, but... <laughs> This one's done, I don't wanna mess it up. It, the real book is stops about right there. And I knew that this was title, and then right below the title would be this face. Um, and I, I'm drawing it so that it can be cropped inside these lines, but you'll notice that I drew, notice that I drew a lot of extra outside. That's so that uh, the colorist, my colorist on this, Brian Miller, he can draw, he can paint this larger picture uh, with this extra edging out here. And then I can use that for advertising and different ratio stuff. Like when I and you get in the diamond catalog, diamond catalog has a different ratio than a comic book. A comic book is more like, a comic book is more like, you know, vertical. And the diamond catalog is more like an A4, um, you know, European square. Um, so I need a little wider, a little wider imagery for that. Um, okay, so that's kind of it. Uh, these measurements will be in the how to draw book, and you can grab this template from there. Talk to you later.